Okay, people. So, as you can see in the background, right? I'm in my sewing room. And what I'm doing right now, obviously thinking about Uncle John and Shmay, right? It's amazing how much I think about Uncle John. Shimei, I just get angry when I think about her. I get frustrated and angry and flustered. And Uncle John, I just miss him. I miss him moving around the house. I miss him being in his bedroom listening to his cassette deck with his old country western songs. I'm wearing these glasses, taking out a zipper from one of Tisha's jackets thinking about after I take it apart and get it all in a bag you'll see you'll see that you'll see you see how big and bulky it is this camera hasn't done this in a while uh oh what's happening here people <laughs> what's going on oh my sorry about that what can I do anyway do you see this big bulky jacket this is what Tisha gave me. All right. When you go to a fabric store, things tend to get expensive. Don't forget I have that walnut art I still want to do with Andre. So taking apart old jackets every now and then, you know, I get to use the fabric when we actually get to start to do those things. But I want to show you something here. Right? If you go if you were to go to a fabric store, this is not what I'm going to talk about in the video, but for now, if you were to go to a fabric store, do you see that? I got like five of them. They're nice. That's pretty expensive. The zipper by itself, metal zipper, oh, if I remember correctly, not on sale, is probably about four bucks. All right. It's not really that heavy duty, but it is a metal zipper. Some of this fabric, well, the only thing it would be good for would be for craft because it's already starting to uh, wear and tear just from rubbing. It's not a very good fabric, but for background on a picture frame and then do your art around it would be perfectly fine or to make little manipulatives for whatever reason or patches or whatever you want to do and then you still have the ribbing which you could reuse and it's a nice thick ribbing I don't know if you can see that do you see it's a nice one right that you can still use on other pieces of clothing so you have it on the arms and you have it around that right so when I make Amari and Andre some clothes if I wanted to I could use it for that and then on the inside of the hood you could make yourself a little puppet <laughs> with that so what I'm gonna do and this is what I do sometimes I take them apart people well, I'll show you this was one of my old jackets. This is leather from an old jacket that I wore for a long, long time. And then what ends up happening <clears throat> is I end up going outside working in the yard. And because I'm too lazy to come inside and change my jacket, let's just say I go to the corner store or something dumb like that, right? And I'm walking back and I find wood, you know, that I can salvage and use at home. I'll carry it home despite the jacket that I'm wearing. And if it happens to be one of my better jackets, then, you know, you do that enough times, and then one day you just say, fuck it, I'm staying outside and I'm working, and it starts to get, you know, whatever, right? So anyway, that's what happened to this jacket. It got worn, torn, and whatever, and, and anyway, as you can see, I picked it apart. It was a jacket that went past up into my thigh area, so it was quite long. It's a heavy leather, and that's, you know, compared to this, I'm trying to show you. See how thin that is to pack it away for when you need it versus this way all big and bulky and what are you going to see after I'm done this I'll put it in a bag 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my daughter. I take purses apart sometimes too, right? And take my daughter to the fabric store. And I'm going to show her how much money I saved in terms of either sewing material or craft material, approximately, just by taking the time to sit here and pick it apart. Right? So that's what I'm doing. Right? It gives me time just to sit and think and reflect. Right? Telling myself it's not so bad in here. Because again, it's too small, right? Could be worse. I could be sitting up in the fucking bush somewhere in the Congo with a baby hanging off my boob with no milk in my breasts, right? Stressed out with no place to go in the middle of the night. Because that's how some people are out there living. So this is mild compared to that. And that's what I tell myself when I get frustrated. Because the reason I turned on this video, and now I'm picking, right? The reason I turned on this video, I guess you could say, is to document the fact that whatever is going on with my youngest grand grandson, Amari, in terms of this passing him around under a co-parenting application, not an application officially to the court, but... That's the premise being used in terms of the father having parenting time. Well, let me tell you something, people. I'm not a bad person, really. Like, I don't mind Amari seeing his extended family members, if you want to say it like that. I think it's good for him. I'm not going to be around forever, right? Oh, I'm looking into his face tonight, Tisha. Uh, I was going to call you Tisha. <laughs> Tisha's on my mind. I talked to Tisha, right? I was looking into Amari's face tonight, and I could see Shmay. Mm -hmm. I see my daughter, right? And because of that, people, right, you know, I don't mind if he has connection with his extended family, right? It's all in how it's being done that I don't like, right? That's one. Because if you want to put it to a comparison, in regards to child protection. I'm going to call this video Child Protection in the Sewing Room. <laughs> okay. Because I'm in the sewing room, right? Talked a little bit about some sewing. But basically what made me want to turn on this camera is because I kind of want to document the fact that, one, I am not a bad person, and two, I can compromise, and three, I have been trying to compromise despite despite everything that's been going on, right? And, uh, you know, how it's, how, how, in an adult sense, I guess you could say, you know, I could see myself, oh, I gotta say this in the right manner so that it's understood that You know, Amari has a future, right? And at some point, I'm not going to be in that future, people. So he's going to need quite a few caregivers along the way. So, you know, it's enough raising a child that's active and mobile and in, you know, can learn to be independent and that type of thing. It's going to be another thing trying to raise a child that needs assistant moving and just doing daily day, day-to-day 
care needs and that type of thing. So why wouldn't I want to compromise? Thing is, I don't know how to say this. Maybe if I bring it to Sierra, my daughter, okay? Like, how can I establish a healthy relationship with people that are going out of their way specifically to protect somebody who potentially harmed my daughter? And it's beyond harm, people. My daughter is dead. If Sierra can be asked to leave the home, right, based on the suspicions of what her overzealous sister had to say at one time in terms of exaggerating the truth, and the social worker took it word for word because the social worker just got out of college and came into the business of child apprehension and wanted her first one on the record. And my family was an easy target because of Sierra's history. And Shimei was a rebellious teenager that was just going off at the mouth just because and stretched the truth where, based on that, Sierra was asked to leave the house and not come back on an allegation that wasn't proven. Otherwise, they were going to remove Andre from the home. Right? Whereas now, today, in a new situation, trying to get this out, right? There are allegations being placed against the father that he caused harm to my daughter so that he could take control of the baby. That was the motivating factor. That and jealousy. Jealousy that she was moving on with her own life and she had a rendezvous with her former boyfriend. Right? A month prior to her death. So there was a couple of ruling factors in there as to why what happened to Shemay happened. It wasn't just, oh, I want the baby. Although that's always been a motivating factor and that can be proven in terms of violent behavior to get his own way. But if there's allegations against a man that he's injured somebody in a very, very serious way, I'm not just talking about beating somebody up and they go to the hospital and then they get released and, you know, I'm talking about as in death, dead, gone forever, never coming back. And there's allegations against that person that person did that, was the cause of that, right? I don't understand how he's allowed to see his child compared to what Sierra wasn't allowed to see her child at, at the time with the allegations of her using drugs or what is it? Uh, where they fall off the bandwagon, right? It wasn't that Sierra was using drugs, she was starting to fall off the bandwagon. And based on that, for child protection reasons, she wasn't allowed to come home, and she wasn't allowed to be around him. Knowing that once they did that, chances are with her addiction, she'd fall off the wagon for sure. And then, of course, she did and became an addict. And then there was never no recovery. Right. So, like, I don't understand the disparity outside of what's going on in the court right now is strictly family law. There is no 
child protection legislation in there from a ministry standpoint of view. Right. Doesn't mean that they're not watching because they are. They've been watching since day one because the minute Shmay died, they called social services on me and tried to call me unfit because it's been about getting Amari. As soon as Shemay died, it was about getting Amari and nothing more and nothing less. And therefore, because that was the motivating factor, everything is still pending in terms of those allegations that have yet to be dealt with. But for some reason, maybe doing drugs is more serious than maybe killing somebody in terms of child protection where the father I don't know people like this grandmother is stupid she's so fucking stupid like seriously if she would kick her son out I don't care if she's watching or not because they creep my videos right just like when Uncle John went missing those people that took Uncle John and did what they did to his life they creeped my videos too so that's that's nothing new. Right. They um this grandmother seriously, she should be kicking out her son. I'm not talking to her. I'm talking to the people that listen to the story as it unfolds. Right? And if this grandmother would have done the right thing by her grandson, just like I had to do the right thing by Andre at that time with Sierra, whether it came through MCFD or whether it came through me, right? Once it was there on the table, it had to be dealt with. And it continues to be dealt with, right? You know, there would have been a better relationship with how we care for Amari because she's not caring for Amari. She's just transporting him around so that her son can have that so-called parenting time while she gets her snippet of having her grandchild with her as if the grandchild himself is a dirty secret. You know what I mean? It's not like she can relax and just be a grandmother. Right? She's always on guard. Yeah. All right. Plotting and scheming how to take Amari away from the home he was born into. From the home, people. He was born in this home. He wasn't born in that home. He was born in this home. He looks like his mother. She needs to kick him out, see what he does. See how he fends for himself as a man. See if he can stand on his own two feet, handle his own problems like a man. Right. Put her grandchild first and not her son. She's never been in that position where she's had to put her grandchild first before her own child. I have. I've been doing it with Sierra for a long time. I've done it with my oldest son, with his drinking. Right. I still do it with Sierra. I'm more adamant. But that doesn't mean that I'm not trying to help her when I can, because I do. I just don't let her impede in the house anymore because you know that old saying the truth is in the pudding right you know so I think so what's this guy doing does he sit at home they live in a two bedroom townhouse 
mother, son, and daughter. So I'm wondering, okay, who's sharing rooms with who? <laughs> not that it's any of my business, because it's not. But, at the same time, you know, she's protecting somebody that has serious allegations placed against them. And she's avoiding that fact, which, if MCFD was really involved, would have to act on those allegations, because if they're going to act on the allegations of Sierra uh, falling off the bandwagon, or just starting to fall off the bandwagon, but hadn't fallen off the bandwagon yet in terms of drug drug use, and they kicked her out of the house, then what gives this man the privilege to stay with his mother and live in her house <clears throat> and see Amari three times a week? As everybody walks around acting like she may never existed. That's the part I don't get. And then want to remain hostile with me, as if I'm the one that's creating the problem. Because I just won't take my grandson and say, here, you can have him. Bye, I'll never see you again. Because that's kind of what they want. So, where we're at right now, since this last little stint with the car situation... You know, I just take out the baby, I don't say nothing. She says nothing, I say nothing. Tisha texted and said, text us what you're feeding him. I'd be surprised if they'll text to tell us what they're feeding him because ultimately, at the end of the day, they don't care if he gets constipated because that's not what it's about. Right? It's about... I don't know, it's like some competition or something. Right? That's not grandparenting. Right. My son took Tisha to pick up Amari on Thursday. Tisha was ready to take a bus. It was raining out. But my son ended up doing it because I'm not driving that car until I know it's not going to do that again. Right. So we got like Uh, half of November, so December, January, February, March, April. We've got like five and a half months of no talking people, and that's supposed to be good for Amari. All right? Don't say shit to each other. As long as you follow court rules, even though they were willing to break those court rules, in the event that Tisha and, uh, or I couldn't pick up Amari on Thursday night or on Tuesday night or whatever night it was. They were just going to keep him. Bring him back in the morning. They can change the rules, but I can't, right? My daughter gets kicked out of the house turned into a junkie on, on an allegation that directly affected her and really nobody else at the time. Because that's all it was, was an allegation. I have video of Sierra doing very well at that time, people. She looked good. She was doing really well. But based on an allegation from a haughty sister who thought she was better than her sister and who liked to rattle off at the mouth every now and then. Sierra's life was ruined. While in this situation, Andre's life is getting ruined. Tisha's life has been ruined. Marquane's life has been ruined. Andre's life really has been ruined, too, because he lost his Auntie Shemaine. Alea May's life has been ruined because she lost her Auntie Shemay. Amari's life has been ruined because he's lost his mother. 
my life has been ruined because I've lost my daughter. So how many lives is that? Marcane, Tisha, Andre, Alea May, Amari, and me. That's six lives, not including Brooks and Sierra, which would be seven, eight. Because they've lost their sister too, right? So eight lives, people, have been completely ruined. For the rest of our lives, for whatever age we all live to, based on the allegations that there is an individual that is directly um, involved in my daughter's death that is yet to be determined in terms of he didn't do it. And he's allowed to stay home with his mother while his mother does his bidding and acts like a fucking bitch. Because she works. So how does that work? A young mother gets kicked out in the street in the middle of winter based on an allegation that she was doing drugs when in fact she wasn't. She relapsed, but she wasn't doing drugs, people. And based on that allegation that came from her 17-year-old sister who was acting out and having a tantrum, social services kicked her out of the house and even when they took kicked her out of the house because the newbie wanted to learn how to apprehend a, apprehend a child they put their sights on Andre and they took him out of a daycare situation while Shimei's room sat empty for 15 months as we fought to get him back and Sierra sure she was around but she wasn't in the house And the only reason Sierra was around was because she was so sick. Because of what happened to her. But when Andre came home, she wasn't. Not in the sense of as she was when she was a mother to Andre before those things happened. Right. So, this woman is really dumb. Because she's choosing her son over her grandson. For some reason, she seems to think in some fairyland fucking tale that he's going to get Amari and the eight people's lives that this person ruined is just going to disappear like Shemay. That's how dumb she is. We're all going to just disappear just like Shemay. Right. She's more interested in having her son live at home with her than she isn't about kicking him out and letting him stand on his own two fucking feet and then just establishing a relationship with her grandson. Right? Where there's no conflict of interests where there's civil, civil, you know, just civil, being civil towards each other. They pick him up with Jamaican music blasting around in her freaking green 
whatever she rides drives i don't know it's not a, it's not a van it's like it's not a car i don't know what that is but it's uh, that green garb whatever it is with jamaican music playing in the background tonight i'm t i'm going to videotape it people i am going to fucking videotape it the next time he starts screaming at the top of his lungs out of nowhere i'm going to come and i'm going to videotape it and i'm going to upload it because he did that tonight and scared the freaking shit out of me I put him in his crib, he was happy, everything, you know, I was out here, I heard this screaming at the top of his lungs, I go in there, and he's just screaming, he wasn't in pain, he wasn't, he was just screaming, and it's probably because they got him riding around in the freaking backseat with fucking Jamaican music blasting, I'm not saying, you know, you can't play music and stuff, but still, that's like putting him in a freaking MRI machine and scaring the shit out of him, because he was screaming at the top of his lungs, well, that's my imagination, though, right? It's just stupid. This whole situation is stupid. I don't know why they want to build a relationship on a strife. Mm. Always arguing protect somebody from allegations that are like eight times more serious than Sierra was ever had allegations placed on her. And if Sierra can be kicked out of the house, so can that guy. Right. But here's the problem. It falls under a different act. It's different legislation. Right. which puts a whole lot of people at risk. Because we're just in a honeymoon period again, people. This last little incident with the car just brought the abuse, whether it's psychological or whatever, to the surface. And it's gone back down to sleep for a while. And because nobody's talking, nothing's being dealt with, right? It's just festering. And I don't know how that's good for Amari. Right? I wouldn't consider that to be healthy grandparenting skills. You know? Considering from where it's coming from and why, 